If you have a Bible available to you where you're watching or listening, I want you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2, in just a moment, I want to begin reading in verse number 1 in this particular study on this Sunday evening of the revival meeting. I began to study the Gospel of John for my personal Bible daily study a few months ago in my life. We understand this, every word in the Bible is the inspired Word of God. That literally means that God has breathed upon every word from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is a very specific book. We understand this. There are divisions. There are times. There are things that are given in the pages of the Word of God. We realize the different dispensations that are given in from the Old to the New Testament of the Word of God. I love the Gospel of John for many reasons. It is said that the Gospel of Luke is a very detailed Luke book. Well, there's a reason for that because Luke was a physician. It seems that when Luke would write, he would write in detail because in most most of the situations he would think in much detail. I have read many, not one, but many commentators say that John, the gospel of John, is written in a very simplistic way. I somewhat disagree with that particular statement. Though John was not a detailed writer, but there are things that were emphasized in the gospel of John that was not emphasized in any other gospel of the New Testament of the Word of God. One writer said in the content of the scripture of the gospel of John, a prominent feature of the gospel is the emphasis of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Jesus is twice called God, the only begotten son of God. John refers to God as father 116 times more than all the other gospels that are combined in the word of God. Now we are interested in what John is saying to the children of God. One writer said in the gospel of John, the purpose, the meaning, we find that in John chapter number 20 and verse number 31, we realize the primary focus for the gospel of John. Now, we certainly cannot take time to deal with everything that the gospel of John is saying to the child of God. But we must understand the difference in the gospel of John. One said that the word signs is used 17 times in the gospel of John. It is often translated miracles. Throughout all the other gospels, this very same word is only used 28 times in all the other gospels. John is emphasizing, John is reminding us that we still serve a miracle working God. Isn't it wonderful to know that in times like these, we don't have a religious leader. We don't have a statue upon the shelf, but we have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We still serve a miracle working God. So as we study the gospel of John, we must understand that he is emphasizing the miracle working power of God. And then one writer said that the word believe, it appears 98 times in in the gospel of John. Now that same word to believe, it only appears 29 other times in all the other gospels of the New Testament. I believe John is reminding us. I believe throughout all the gospel of John, he is emphasizing in this day, in this hour, we can still believe, we can still put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we are doubting, when we fear, when we are troubled, isn't it wonderful to know that when we cannot put our faith in the government, we cannot put our faith in education, we certainly can put, not put our faith in the economy, we can put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he emphasizes to believe, he emphasizes signs or miracles and then one said that the word life is used 34 times in the gospel of John. This same word is only used 13 other times in all the other gospels. So 
what we serve. We learned this last Sunday. We've known this for all these years. We don't serve a dead Savior. We serve a God of life. John refers to eternal life. John speaks of everlasting life. Isn't it wonderful to know our God is not dead. Our God is not in a tomb. Our God did not take his last breath at Calvary, but he is alive forevermore. We serve a God of everlasting life. So as we study the gospel of John, we must keep in our mind everything that John is emphasizing in this particular gospel. We must be reminded if we are to stay in context in the gospel of John, we are to be reminded he is emphasizing signs and miracles. He is emphasizing that we can put our faith believing in the Lord Jesus Christ even in times like these. He is emphasizing uh, we don't have some life but we have everlasting life and it is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So watch John chapter number 2 and verse number 1. The very first word in this chapter is what is considered a conjunction. John said and the third day. Now we're students of the Bible. We are looking not at some words but we are looking at every word of the word of God. So this very first word is a conjunction in John chapter number one. If you know anything about the gospel of John and no doubt that you do he is emphasizing in the very first chapter the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know this. We understand this as Bible believing Christians. He was all God God, not ceasing to be all man. He was all man robed in a flesh, not ceasing to be all God. So he took upon this robe of flesh and he dwelt among us upon this earth. So in John chapter number two, he is continuing what he has already said. He is not changing the subject. He is not changing the pattern of the thought, but he is simply reminding us that we are still speaking of the God of deity. We are still referring to the Lord Jesus Christ who was all God not ceasing to be all man. So watch the Bible, John chapter number two and verse number one. And this conjunction, the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. But I love verse number two. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. To be called, it literally means this. They were invited to the wedding. They were invited to the marriage. We know this. We understand this. Our God is a gentleman. In other words, Jesus would not have went to the wedding or have attended the marriage if he had not been called or invited by the wedding party. Can I say it this way? Wasn't it a wonderful day in your life when you invited God inside of you? Wasn't it a good day in your life? God could save anybody. God can save them at any time, but he won't save you till you ask him to save you. Maybe you're watching this revival meeting on a Sunday night. Maybe you're listening to this revival meeting and you are lost without God. You say, where is God? I can't find God. I'll tell you where he is. He's listening for your voice. He is waiting for you to invite him. He went to the wedding because he was invited to the wedding. So watch the Bible, verse number three. And when, I love this introduction, expository time, and when they wanted wine. Mother Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Can I say this introduction? There was a concern at this wedding. In other words, they had ran out of what they had had. There was something at the beginning of the marriage that they had, but now somewhere in the midst of this wedding, they had run out of what they had used to have. I'll tell you why we need revival in America. I'll tell you why we need revival in our churches. We have ran out of what we used to have. In that day and in that instance, wine was a good thing. In that particular instance, wine was a good thing. Can I say it this way to see 
evening, uh, on a Sunday evening in the revival meeting, uh, there's some things that we used to have in the house of God. There were preachers all over America. They didn't preach to entertain. They didn't preach to please a crowd. But they would mount the pulpits across this land and they would open up the word of God and they would expound the saith the Lord and the power of God would fall down from the pulpit. I'll tell you what we've done. We have ran out of what we used to have. There were the saints of God in the old day. They had a burden for lost souls. They wanted to see their family saved. They didn't care if their kids were popular. They didn't care how much money they made. But they didn't care about the souls of lost humanity. And I'm here to tell you, maybe, just maybe, God has allowed all of this to happen. We have ran out of what we have used to have. We used to have the power of God. We used to have a burden for souls. They had ran out of what they used to have. They had the wine, but they ran out of the wine. God has stopped us now in America. Maybe we've realized there's some things we used to have that we no longer have. There's some concern at the wedding. Number two, exposition. There's crucifixion at the wedding. Watch verse number four. Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. This term woman in Greek, it's going, it's one of respect. He wasn't disrespecting his mother. Mine hour is not yet come. It refers to his crucifixion because his greatest concern, it was not yet time for him to reveal that he was the true Messiah. Yes, Jesus is about to change the water into wine. Yes, Jesus raised the dead. Yes, Jesus made the blind to see again. Yes, Jesus made the dumb to speak and the deaf to hear. I'm here to tell you the greatest miracle and the greatest thing that ever happened upon this earth was when the Lord Jesus Christ God took upon a robe of flesh that he might bleed and die for the sins of the world. Yes, God could stop this virus. Yes, God could stop this pandemic. But listen to me and listen well. The greatest virus in this world is sin. It's a lost and a dying world. Jesus paid it all. He paid the price in full. There's a concern at the wedding. There's crucifixion at the wedding. But I'm interested in the command at the wedding. Watch verse number five. The Bible said his mother, I love that, saith unto who? Watch this. Every word in the Bible is important. She didn't say it to the wedding party. She didn't say it to the bride or the bridegroom. She didn't say it to the governor of the feast. She said it to the only ones that would listen to what she's about to say, the servants. You know what God is looking for today? He's not looking for another governor. He's not looking for somebody to dress up so fancy just to be a part of the wedding party. He is looking for some servants that will listen to every aspect and every part of his command. God has shut America down. God has shut the bars. God has shut many abortion clinics. God has took our gods down to their knees. I am here to tell you he is looking for some servants. He is looking for somebody that will do everything that he commands. She said to the servants one thing. Watch the Bible. Here's the message. Here's the study. Whatsoever. Not me, not me, not Mary. He said, Jesus, unto who? You, the servants, do it. It may not make any sense. It may not be practical. It may seem so strange in your way of thinking, but I am here, Mary said, I am here to tell you at this wedding, we have run out of what we used to have. We have made our bottles and our jugs empty. I am just here to remind you, I may not understand it. You may not understand it, but whatsoever he saith do it. And in this day of trouble, in this day of perilous times, I don't know what all God is doing. I don't know what God is trying to do, but if we're ever going to have revenge, Bible, if we're ever going to see the power of God, if we're ever going to see our land saved for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatsoever he saith, that's exactly what we should do. Can I say three things? And I'm done. Number one, watch the reality of the miracle. Watch the Bible. There were three aspects to this command. The Bible said in verse six, and there this is strange. And there were set there six water pots of stones. Why? The custom. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus <laughs> saith unto them. Watch the reality. 
Fill what? The water pots with what? Water. You know what he said? Just put back in the water pots what belongs in the water pot. <laughs> Can I say, if we want to experience the miracles of God, if we truly want to see revival, if we truly want to see souls saved, if we truly across America want to see God move like he has never moved before, i tell you what you ought to do, child of God. i tell you what I ought to do, child of God. I ought to put back in my water pot what belongs in my water pot. And can I say, for the last few weeks in America, God has taken away our pleasure. God God has taken away our idols. God has taken away those things we thought we had to have. And he has emptied our water pots. It'd just be a good idea to open up the word of God and read what thus saith the Lord. It would be a good idea to get back in our prayer closet and fall down and talk to a holy God. God, through a virus, through a pandemic, has emptied our water pots. Jesus said, I'll tell you what you ought to do this time. Put back in your water pot what belongs in your water pot. Can I be honest? We have filled our water pots up with junk. We have filled our water pots up with little gods and little idols. No wonder we're not having revival. We have filled our little water pots up with things we really didn't need. God didn't want them in our life. Jesus said, if you want a miracle, if you want that which you had back that you once had, you ought to fill up your water pots. What belongs in your water pots? Child of God, read your Bible more than you've ever read your Bible. Pray more than you've ever prayed. We ought to put back in our water water pots what belongs in our water pots three aspects to this command number one just put water back in the water pot notice what the bible said fill the water pots with water and they filled them up i love this to the brim you know what that means they didn't fill them up halfway you know what i'm afraid of i believe in my christian service in my christian life i've been doing it halfway I mean, I'll read my Bible, but I don't read it like I should. I, I'll pray every now and then, but I don't pray like I should. The Bible said pray without ceasing. You know, those servants did that day. Uh, they didn't fill it up halfway. <laughs> they didn't even fill it up to the top. They filled it up so far to the brim uh, that it was beginning to spill out. It was beginning to flow out. I'll tell you what God is trying to do uh, for the children of God in America. If we're ever going to have revival, we can't do it halfway. Uh, we can't do it some of the way. Uh, we ought to fill it up to the brim. Read more than you've ever read. Pray more than you've ever prayed. Serve God with your life. Fill it up. And the Bible said these servants filled it up to the brim. Here it is. What have you been doing halfway for Christ? So I read my Bible. How long have you prayed? I pray. How much have you read your Bible? Many of you are home right now with your families. When was the last time my father would do this so often? When was the last time when you opened the Bible, you had your daily devotions? When was the last time you were sitting at your dinner table, your children, your grandchildren were there, your husband, your wife? When was the last time you opened up the Bible and you gave them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? We ought to quit serving him halfway. If we could ever learn anything in a pandemic, in this troubled times and troubled days, we have served him partially. We have served him with a fraction of our life we ought to fill it up to the brim give God everything that belongs to him the reality number one fill it up the Bible said they fill them up to the brim verse number eight and he saith unto them number two draw out now that that literally means to take what is in the water pot out of the water pot Taze Valley Baptist Church, God has blessed you in this church. God has given you a man of God for your pastor. You are so spiritually spoiled as many churches are across America. God has done things in the Taze Valley Baptist Church you could only dream and you could imagine. But you know what God said he wants you to do? He wants you to take it out of your water pot. He wants you to remind the lost and a dying world this is not the end. I know we're in a pandemic, but God's getting ready to do something that you never dreamed, you never thought possible. 
I believe this is one of the greatest opportunities for revival than we've ever had in the United States of America. But if we just keep it all in our water pots when this is over, when America opens up its doors, when America goes back in business, we ought to do everything that God asks us to do. We ought to take out of our water pots what God has put in our water pots. Draw out of the water pot. How many years have you came to this church? You've soaked it all in, but you never took it out. You enjoyed the good things of God at Tays Valley Baptist Church, but you all kept it for yourself. You know what he said? I'm going to perform a miracle, but before I perform this miracle, there's something you have to do. I'm not saved by work, sir. If you're watching this by Facebook, by YouTube, any other means of electronics, any other way you're watching this, if you believe in any way, shape, or form that you're saved by works, you are lost without God. Salvation is only through the grace of an almighty God. I could not save myself. I could not save you. Oh, but I'm glad we're saved by his grace. I'm glad we've been washed in his blood. It's all because of the grace of God. But after salvation... I'm a servant. After salvation, there's something I must do. Before we ever experience the miracles of God, here's the reality. Number one, we got to fill up our water pot. Number two, we got to draw it out of our water pot. And the Bible said after they drew it out and bear unto the governor of the feast. Look what they did. They bear it. They did exactly what Christ asked them to do. They didn't just fill up their water pots. How many times have we been at the Jubilee? How many times have we been in a revival meeting? How many times we walk out of this place filled up, but we never take it out? How many times have we been filled up and we took some out, but we never gave it to who God asked us give it to? Before you'll ever see the miracles, before I'll ever see the miracles. We must obey every aspect of this command. Number one, there's the reality of the miracle. Number two, there's recreation of the miracle. Watch verse number nine in the exposition. And when the ruler or the governor of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, I love this, but the servants which drew the water, they knew. You know what that means? God's servants knew before anybody else knew. Can I say the world don't understand this? Many aspects we don't understand this. This pandemic and all the virus and everything that is happening. But I'm here to tell you if you'll just get in the Word of God, if you'll just listen and focus your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will speak to His servants. He'll show you things that He won't show anybody else before anybody else at the wedding knew. The servants, the servants knew. So watch the Bible. So, verse 9, the governor of the feast, he called the bridegroom, saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth the good wine. All of a sudden, the water was changed to wine. You know what God did? He took something good and made it better. You, you can make, men has technology, men has abilities, men has the know-how. Men can take their minds and they can build towers and they can build buildings and they can create things with their mind and invent things. But I tell you what they can't do. They can't create water. You must have water to survive. It was God that created water. It was God that made water to life. But I tell you what God did that day. He recreated something that he had already created. That reminds me of a time in my life when I was lost without God. That reminds me of the time in my life I was on my way to hell. You know why you're here, sir? You know why I'm standing behind this pulpit, ma'am? It was because God breathed into the womb of my mother. It wasn't a doctor that did that. It wasn't the nurses that did that. It was a holy God that gave me life in the womb of my mother. I was created by the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what the Bible said? In sin did my mother conceive me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I am here because of the creative work of God. 
but I am saved because God recreated me. He took something that it already created and he made it better. And I'm here to remind everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice. If you are lost without God, it was God that gave you life. It was God that breathed into the womb of your mother. But you must be born again. There was recreation. There was a reality. But number three, and I'm done. There's the reaction of the miracle. Watch the Bible. He saith, verse 10, unto him, every man at the beginning to set forth the good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. In other words, God simply saved the best for last. I know you're fearing. I know you're doubtful. I know you don't understand. I don't either. But I'm here to tell every child of God. I'm here to tell every grandmother, every grandfather that's wondering, that's fearing, that's doubting. I'll tell you what God is doing. We may not understand it now. We may not realize what is taking place now. But he has saved the best for last. What a day that will be. There'll be no more virus. There'll be no more cancer. There'll be no more hospital. There'll be no more jail cell. I'm here to remind you, yes, God has blessed us here. Yes, we have sipped the wine of God here, but you ain't tasted nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Sir, if you're fearful, ma'am, if you're doubting, just hold on a little longer. The best is yet to come. Hallie, I want you to help me with this invitation. If you're watching this and you're lost, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. Only Christ can save you. Can I say if you're lost in this world, this is the best that you'll ever have. The reason the ruler, the governor of the feast, he didn't understand this. It didn't make no sense to him. That's exactly what the world is doing. They want their best now. But God's timetable, the best is yet to come. Do you know him? Child of God, I know it's bad. Child of God, I know some of you are wondering, how am I going to buy my food? How am I going to buy my medicine? Can I say God knows? God understands. And the best is yet to come. Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise. God, help us now to realize the need for revival, to realize what we have lost in our water bottles. God, help us now to obey every aspect of this command that we too may be reminded the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name I pray.